It's 7 o'clock. I'd like to call the Granby Planning Zoning Commission meeting of Tuesday, January the 10th to order. Uh, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'd like to do a commission check-in and any seating of alternates. Uh, my name is Mark Lockwood. I'm the commission chair. I'll start to my right. Uh, Eric, Eric Lukingville, member. Matt Peters, member. Eric Myers, vice chair. John Boardman, member. Christine Chitty, member. Paula Johnson, alternate. And uh, Brennan, uh, Commissioner Shanahan. Brennan Shanahan is not here tonight, so Paula will be sitting in for her. For him. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda is item number four, public session. Items not on the agenda or uh, part of a public hearing. Anyone like to speak to us tonight? Please come forward. Anyone on Zoom? I don't see anyone, so going uh, any other public session? None being seen, we'll close public session. <coughs> Item number five is action on the minutes from December 13th, 2022. And by the way, Happy New Year to everyone. I think I can still mm -hmm. say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was not here for that particular meeting, but I did watch the, uh, I still call it a tape, but I still watched the tape and uh, thought it was, uh, the minutes looked to reflect that, but I'll let other people can comment. I thought they were thorough. Didn't see any. I thought they were yeah. good. <coughs> if there's no comment, I'll take a minute or a motion to approve. So moved. Second. The motion is second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Abstained. I will abstain as well. Motion uh, to pass the minutes it carries. Next is item six application or receive applications and schedule public hearings as required or if needed. Uh, first is an application for a site plan modification at 280 uh, Sam Brook Street. Um, Abby, Abby, you and I spoke a little bit about this. This is for the site plan only modification. Maybe you want to explain a little bit? Right. So um, a few months ago when the applicant came in before this commission, they were presenting a few changes to the site plan and changes to the building elevations. They only had the elevations ready for buildings one, two, and three. Um, the commission did approve those changes with the stipulation that they were to return um, for approval for the remaining buildings. Um, so that is what this application is for. It's just for the building elevations for buildings four, five, six, and seven. Um, I have reviewed them already. They are the same changes that were approved to the first three buildings. Um, the commission is not required to hold a public hearing for site plans or site plan modifications. So I'll leave it up to you folks if you think a public hearing is necessary for this one um, or if you're comfortable um, just scheduling it for the next meeting for review and action. So Abby, if I understand correctly, there were no changes from the prior meeting we had. The, the plans are the same. You've reviewed them. There's no changes Correct. to that. They're just coming to the commission requested them to come back. Right. Because my, um, my feeling is that's the case, there's no changes, we've already reviewed it, that we do not need a uh, additional public hearing. I'll be open to... I, I agree. agree. I, I agree as well. I mean, it's the public's, been, the changes that are proposed, the public's already seen and had an opportunity to be heard on, so I don't know really, I don't see much point in having another public hearing. And, and if I recall specifically from their last session as well as public comment, they committed to making sure that the additional buildings were going to be identical in form to the others. And if you've confirmed that to be the case, there's really not much more to discuss. Is there a way of letting the public understand that <clears throat> we're not quote unquote pushing something under the table? Because often um, that information doesn't get out. So. I think we would still meet. There just <laughs> wouldn't be public comment. So there would still be a full agenda. Okay. In a public. Okay, so it would be we just site plan more yes. approval opposed. 
Exactly. Yeah. And that so would be it, good. yep, that it would, would still be, be yes. yep, formal application, yeah. formal good. presentation by the applicant to Perfect. the commission. You could still ask questions just um, without the public hearing piece of it. That's great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Eric, I did. Fine with me. Yeah. Okay. We will just set that then for no public hearing and we will receive the uh, site plan modification next week. Okay. The site plan. All right, so that will be for January 24th then. Um, we have another application noted on the agenda and then actually two other ones that I'll speak to. Um, so the second one on the agenda for receipt is a special permit for a caretaker apartment for 352 Salmonburg Street. Um, this is um, Sean Levesque's um, landscaping business and Tim's Automotive uh, building there. So they are looking to put an apartment upstairs for a worker, which is allowed by special permit in that zone. Um, in addition to that application, yesterday we had two additional submissions. Um, one is for a garage over 1,000 square feet at 96R Mountain Road, uh, which requires special permit approval. And then another is for a text amendment to allow uh, rear lots by special permit in the R4A zone. So the next, so we do have a meeting on January 24th, which is when we're gonna cover the station 280. Um, the following meeting is on February 14th, um, so that would allow enough time to advertise the apartment, the oversized garage, and then the text amendment with getting that referral over to Krog. We do the apart the first one here uh, next. We could do that next meeting. Do you have enough information for that one? Um. The only issue, I don't think we have enough time to advertise that in the current for the public hearing. For the 24th? Yeah. The deadline is today, right, Renee? Unless we it's did two, statewide. Unless we do statewide. No, I was just curious because that's two weeks from today. Normally we could do that. Well, usually we are able to put the ad in Monday or Tuesday. Um, so that's an issue with doing, getting the ad in the current in time. Because I'd like to get, you know, I think we spoke a little bit. I thought we could get that one done on the next meeting before, because that's, hopefully we can get that one done before the joint meeting. The text amendment, I don't disagree we should do later in February. Yeah, we have to wait anyway because yeah. of Krog, yeah. Um, we could run a statewide ad for that. It's much more expensive, but. Yeah, is the applicant? I informed them that it was most likely going to be February. Do we have I'll, anything I'll else of pressing business on the 24th then? No. So the only thing for the 24th, we would have the station 280, and then there's the plan for the joint uh, Board of Selectmen PNZ meeting um, at 730 after this meeting adjourns. Oh, okay. Is the applicant okay if we go to February for this? Okay. I just want to, I, I will not be available for the meeting on January. So then if uh, we have consensus, those three applications we'll do in February. Sound good, Abby? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, next is item seven, commission discussion on the T1 zone. Uh, again, I did watch the recording tape, whatever you want to call it these days. And um, I want to thank the Development Commission, and I see Marty's in the audience, the chair there, for a very well done presentation, an uh, overview, and um, kind of a history and where we're going with the uh, uh, that zone. And I thought it was good for the commission. I think that was how uh, we kind of work together with our different boards in town. So I, I appreciate Marty. If you want to pass on to your uh, Fellow commissioners, we appreciate the input. Um, Abby, I don't know how you'd like to go through it. I did review it. Um, I don't know if you want to run through the changes with us and then we can discuss them. Sure. All right, so starting on the first page, um, so we have um, under the goal of the T1 zone, 
Um, the current regulation states that new commercial buildings have to be placed at least 100 feet back from Salmonbrook Street. So the proposed change would be um, an 85 foot setback. Um, and we just clarified from the front property line along Salmonbrook Street. Um, so that's um, basically a reduced setback of 15 feet. So they could be 15 feet closer to the road. So can we take, maybe as we go through the changes, maybe take on questions yeah. as we go? So I think that would be easy. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. What is it across the street? For, for the like, C2 zone? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a 25 foot setback for parking. Mm -hmm. um, and then the building setback is, hang on. to a 50-foot setback. So I guess I just proposed it. Why would it be different? Why would we do it differently, considering it's going to be an identical use across the street? Why, why would we do it differently? Uh, or we've, we've spent a lot of time on this commission doing great work working on consistency, um, and, it, and it seems inconsistent to me. Just throwing it out there. So I will, so even though the C2 zone has that setback, the a lot of the buildings that are already constructed, so on Mill Pond and Stop and Shop, are much greater than 50 feet back. Sure. Yes. Um, they're about 100 feet back. Okay. So would, point would, that while it's not, from a regulatory standpoint, making it 50 would be consistent in terms of what's actually there. Mm -hmm. I guess the only, is Salmonbrook Veterinary Hospital part of that part of that zone or not? So that's the ED zone, okay. actually. Okay, so that, and that's the only thing I can think of that's in that general neighborhood that's close to Yeah, and that is close, sir, yeah. Well, if you get down to the next plaza where the new clinic is, the Hartford Hospital, the walk-in clinic, they're closer. So I think it's... Think they're close? No. The car wash. No, no. no the car wash, no, it's back. Saying that's yeah, that's still, it's more than 50 feet back. Yeah, yeah. it's back. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think that as, as we look at this, it's going to be a, a totally new look going into Granby. Mm -hmm. And I think we we pride ourselves on being rural residential. So we'd like to keep a little bit of that rural feel of a setback with nice plantings and that kind of thing. I think that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. All for it. I'm just looking yeah. for consistency in code. I understand. And, it, and it, it's just yeah. whether or not realistically when we do the site plan, we can enforce. Mm -hmm. um, the, the plantings yeah. and a lot of times the parking lots are in front. Mm -hmm. I also know that T1 zone is not that deep and pu pushing it way back. It, it really restricts what can be done on that piece mm -hmm. of property. So I just opened it up for discussion. Mm -hmm. it, we don't need to decide it. I'm, I'm a consistency person. I don't disagree, um, uh, Eric, in that. My understanding of, and, and Paul, you, you were instrumental in developing it, and um, Eric, you were here, and uh, the idea is to protect that transition into the residentials on the, on the street behind. Mm -hmm. And so and we can look at it, I don't know if 85 is right, but I was also thinking about if the setback's the same as the C2 zone, because it's on Salmonbrook Street, and we protect more of the buffer in the back. Exactly. You, you push yeah. that back, you're actually infringing on the residential yeah. use by I pushing it back through with that. Yeah. If we're, <laughs> I'd rather infringe on Route 10 <laughs> than the residence is behind. Well, I mean, yes, but no, because you're, you're not really infringing, infringing anymore on the residential zone. That's the size of the building. But if you, yeah, push, I mean, if you push back 80 feet and they max out to the rear, you, you know, if you give them some ability to... So if you do 50 feet, they're still going to max out to the rear? Not necessarily. Hey, that goes both ways. It does go both ways. So it, there, it does. This is two separate things. Yeah. It's really the. I, I, We're talking about Sam and Brook Street, not yeah. front and rear. I, I kind straight. of understand where Paul is coming from, though, mm -hmm. in terms of the, what, what it's going to look like driving through there if there's development. It's going to be a huge change. We need front. to make it as, um, I guess, Granby, yes, Granby look as we can, and Granby softer. look as yeah, softer. Yeah. Thank you. That's exactly yeah. the word I mean. I just, I, I see, I don't want. And, and, and no disrespect, disrespect to businesses, but there's a huge difference between the car wash and stock and shop. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, there is. Yeah. If we say 50 feet, we're going to get the car wash. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. 
Does that affect the parking, Abby? The parking can still be in? No, so this is just the building, and we'll get to the so, parking mm -hmm. later that's, on. Yeah, it's just that's the building. I think yeah. It's just the building. So. We'll I table it for now. Yeah, I think it's uh, a good discussion, but I also hear, you know, if, if the, the Stop and Shop TJ Maxx Plaza has a good look to it, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this commission uh, did a great job in the buffer and how it looks, so um, I think we can. We can uh, table that, as you said, Eric, and go along. One thing I'll just, I highlighted it, and uh, Marty, I don't mean to pick on you guys, but um, I noticed they changed Sandbrook Street to Route 10 and back, back and forth. For consistency, I believe the uh, assessor's office in the town, it's officially known as Sandbrook Street. Is that correct, Abby? Yeah. So I think we should just, Sam instead Brook of Route Street. 10, call it Sandbrook Sam Street, Street to be yes. consistent. Because I noticed we've had, um, it varies back and forth. That's just a, that's a good technical thing. Yeah, that's good. Well, and also there's a there's a part of town that includes Route 10 where it's not Sandy Street, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's another reason I think to yeah. call it Sandy Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, ready for the next one? Yep. yep. Um, well, this is going to be upkeep. Yeah, so just moving down, um, this proposed to take out the language. The objective is to create a unified commercial or mixed use area, develop with an internal service road. All applications for development within the T1 zone must take into account this concept for an internal roadway. Um, so that um, whole section is taken did, out because. Did you sk skip up? Excuse me, Abby. Yep. I have restaurants and elderly housing assisted living. Oh, wait, I'm still on the first, on the first page. page. She's on the first page. Sorry. She's on oh, the strike. Oh, I already went through that one. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I already said, yeah, I like the cross out. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that, so, yeah. that, that's where you're going to have Bud Murtha up there saying, no, 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 no. But because different parcels have already been purchased with for the Y, it's, it's changed the ability for that to happen. It's a wonderful change. idea. But it would have been great, but it's it no longer for sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't happen. All right. So yeah, so I apologize, Abby. I, I went over that because I agree with, I saw what the commission came yeah. up with, and it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Fit anymore. And I think we'll also have to discuss what happens with the, maybe with the select one of those easements that are back there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, continue. All right, um, so the next change, um, well, it's actually not really a change. It's more of a highlighted item. So restaurants are allowed subject to section 8.16, so that's by special permit. The Development Commission has noted that um, they recommend this commission look at the issue of drive-throughs in more detail. So drive-throughs are currently allowed by special permit for restaurants in the C2 and industrial zone, um, so not in the T1 zone. Um, so I know that's kind of well, separate but related issue, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so is the recommendation that they be allowed as of right in the T1 zone? Special permit? No, not necessarily as of right, but just perhaps think about allowing it by a special permit similar to the C2 mm -hmm. and industrial zone. If you were going to look at that, I would also, and I'm not even sure that this is in our purview, I would definitely want to look at signage. You're not, you're not allowing you the giant Burger King sign and all of that. Um, not not meaning to disrespect any specific community, I won't name any of them, but <laughs> I really don't want Route 10 in the T1 zone to look like Route 44. That's exactly, yeah. Um, I, I just don't think we want that, that look or feel. And so I would, if we're gonna allow, the, my view is if we're gonna think about allowing them even by special permit, I would want some Stipulations about what the signage had to be mm -hmm. and when architectural, separate. Uh, architecture too. in architecture as well. Well, if I'm correct, right as of right now, all zones have to comply with their zone, zone, excuse me, sign requirement, which is very correct. small. Yeah, so it would be nine square feet for sure. a freestanding sign. Um, anything larger and anything illuminated would require special mm -hmm. permit approval. That's right. So the nine square feet mm -hmm. sign is a standard. It's very okay. Small. So that wouldn't that this wouldn't change this that. Wouldn't change that. Mm -hmm. Right. 
no, no gold marches. Would you would you look at that? I actually find the Burger King signs more offensive, but that's just a personal taste. <laughs> <laughs> would you look at limiting the number of restaurant drive throughs Of course, there are different kind of restaurants and drive throughs so I understand that. But. Yeah, that could be a possibility. So under the current restaurant drive through regulation, um, there are buffer requirements in there, mm -hmm. and I think there's even a requirement that there can only be one per property or something similar to that effect. There is. Um, so that's something that if the commission is inclined to consider drive through restaurants in the zone, we could look at what we currently have in that regulation for buffer distances and see how that would work in the T1 zone or if there might need to be some specific changes to that regulation for the T1 zone. I'm all for looking at it. I think it makes sense by special permit in the right area. So, and we spent a lot of time talking about it for the commercial zone when we changed it. And you're right, we did add quite a few restrictions in there and looked at our commercial overlays to see how many they could get in. And it's very few. So we could do the same thing here. I'm open to, I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm not sold on the idea that it's, we definitely should allow them there, but I'm certainly willing to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I just, the, my paramount concern is that they not change the look and feel of that stretch of mm -hmm. the town. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I, I and, agree. Um, also, I just want to, it, it plays to, I already made a consistency argument with the 50 foot setback, considering there's one right across the street, it's, you know, something I think. Well, there actually isn't one. There isn't one anymore. Uh, since they, there will be another one because there's a approved uh, drive through there, you know, once somebody else takes it up. Yeah, I can't imagine no one's going to take advantage of that already I, being built. I would think so. Yeah. I, I agree. I think we have to have the discussion. I, I know some commission <laughs> members current and past feel strongly about it one way or the other. Uh, my opinion is, you know, they're, they are a 21st century, uh, 20th century, but they've gotten better. Uh, I use them today. I was on a Zoom call in my car. It was great. I uh, had an uh, incident where I was on crutches this year, and I was glad to have one, and I had to go to Southwick. So I think if someone wants to put one in town, it makes sense, and it fits if we can have them in the commercial zone. We have banks. We have the CVS that has them. I actually made this in a past meeting. The Cumberland Farms under regulations yeah. could probably yeah. ask for one because they're not considered a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to harmonize it and, and match what you know people want and do it smartly. I think this, the special permit process does that. And I agree with uh, Chris, what you said, let's look at this and, and, and Paul and Eric and not do it yeah. haphazardly. Yeah, and just architectural review. I, I've been to a McDonald's out in the West and it looked like a Pueblo house. It was absolutely lovely. Yeah. They had a small sign out. But you went by and you thought you could be a New England look to it. I like Abby's idea of like if we're going to look at this, one mm -hmm. of the things we should look at is the existing, uh, the existing limitations that we have, and yeah. whether we feel we need new or different ones mm -hmm. for the for, team. for the team one. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So what I'll do for one of the upcoming meetings, then I'll take the current regulation. Um, do you, you know, put setbacks within the T1 zone so it could show under the current regulation where a drive through could be located and we can use that as a starting point to figure out what might make sense for the That's, T1? That would be great. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, the next change is under number nine. Um, so currently it says elderly housing is allowed by special permit um, with a maximum density of 10 units per acre. Um, the there's a proposed change to move assisted living facilities, independent living facilities, and similar residential uses mm -hmm. up with elderly housing. So right now those uses are under number 11, um, and it's grouped with multifamily residential uh, developments, and they have a maximum density of eight units per mm -hmm. acre. So the Development Commission discussed this in great detail. Um, they thought that there was more similarity between elderly housing, assisted living, and independent, kind of like this yes. stepped Mm -hmm. um, facilities that are out there, so it made sense to group them all together <coughs> and allow the 10 units per acre. Yeah. Um, under this proposed change, the multifamily residential development, so it's your typical apartment development, that would stay <coughs> at eight units per acre. Um, they also made a note that these types of uh, living facilities should be also defined in the zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of discussion about you know what exactly is assisted living versus elderly versus independent. Um, so trying to clarify that a little bit. I think that makes Very a lot good. of sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. 
Yep. Yeah, I agree. Okay. okay. All right. Um, now moving down to 3.10.3, .3, this is the special T1 zone criteria. So under the current regulations, special permit uses are only approved on a lot which contains at least four acres. Um, the Development Commission proposes removing that um, acreage requirement. So this would allow any lot within the T1 zone to apply for a special permit, not just those above four acres. Makes perfect sense because there are lots in that current T right zone that are under four yes. acres. Yes, I think there are all, there are quite a few. Right. Actually. So that and it's a special permit. So if we don't think it's a good idea, we just say no. Don't approve it. Agreed. Okay. Um, I have, I have a question before yeah. we go, sorry. On 3.10.3.4, mm -hmm. and this was not brought up, but it says the establishment of commercial does not uh, currently exist within the town as preferred. Is that something that's realistic that we can enforce as a commission? I was asking, especially my lawyer friends. <laughs> nice as a goal, though. <laughs> I don't know if or you want to put recommended, because I don't think we can dictate what type of use if anybody you know it's just I'm just trying to look as we were updating the regs I put question marks by it I mean, is this like anticipating a battle I mean there's like <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely I'll, I'll, I'll look to our land use lawyer uh, this is the, this is the sort of thing that gets town sued right yeah yeah well let me <laughs> let me put it this way I have not kept up with the case law, but I'll tell you, if I had a client that was on the losing end of this, I would raise this issue. It's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah that's right. It. Look, uh, <laughs> I, I, I would either put as recommended or I'd strike that. Clause. I'd strike it. I don't, I don't know what value that is. Yeah. It's a yeah. nice goal. But, yeah, yeah it, it is a, a nice goal, goal, but I think it's, I, I, I do, I really do think, I'm, I don't practice in the land use area, but even just as a person who's been a lawyer for a while, it looks like a lot of suing happening. And yeah, Paul, our intent with that was so not to steal businesses from downtown to put them out there. Right? Probably, I don't know, but that's, this came from the Development Commission, not, not, not. Well, this is part of our existing regulations. Yeah. Regulation. Yes. Yeah, so that's right. what I think it was to not duplicate so you don't have a, yeah. a second. Well, I mean, you could have another veterinary clinic there, and that wouldn't be an awful thing. So, and that, that's a commercial business. Isn't that considered a commercial business? A small coffee shop. Yeah. Another coffee shop. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was, the intent was on bigger things. Big, the CVS is yes. the. Walgreens, yeah. Another vet's yeah. 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 I think I Only see the center and strike it off. Well, that's I where we hope the Development Commission can get out there and, and encourage others to come in. So I, I would suggest to strike that. I agree. The, the other one I had mm -hmm. was the next section, and I need to ask the commission. Uh, I saw the recording tape, whatever you want to call it again, and that area has changed. I saw there's some consolidation allowance. Does that formula still make sense for the T1 zone? I'm just throwing that out there as a question. Which one? Oh, the yeah. three to five. Isn't that top of the next Maybe point page? five. Yes. Point yes. five. Pro probably not. Again, I mean, I, I think that the, I don't know when these regulations <clears throat> were written, but I, I have the sense that what's left to develop in the T1 zone is much different than what was available yes. to be developed at the time. Also, this <laughs> calculation had to have been based on the four acre minimum. Right. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, anymore. and again, I feel like, and I, I know that this commission isn't going to be here forever and that others will be on this commission mm -hmm. after we, we have gone, but I feel like we've, we've been able to use the special permit process judiciously so that we don't need to be this prescriptive. It, 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 for, it just came up with the coffee shop example because that's a dear wish right. of mine. And um, I would say that what would make sense for a coffee shop <clears throat> in terms of the ratio of might make might be different than some other kind of a, a cannabis establishment, for or example. Or a stop and shop. Or, or a stop and shop. <laughs> so I, I think, we, I feel like we have the discretion as part of our special permit process, and this actually kind of limits that. And I don't know, now that, the, now that what's left to develop there is fairly, in my opinion, fairly idiosyncratic parcels. I'm not sure that a further limitation like this is, I mean, if the goal of this 
ultimately is to get some appropriate development in what's left of the T1 zone. I think this is just a barrier. I, I agree. And they're talking about 4.8 acres, and we've already said, and that doesn't have to so be. So that might be something we want to, can, we want to look at, okay. whether to keep it modified, strike it. Yeah, so under, in Section 5, the maximum lot coverage in the ED zone is 40%. So that means if we take out this 20% of the total land area for commercial buildings, um, you would the default would be no more than... 40% of the lot area can be covered by the roof of any building. That's certainly better than 20%, which is quite small. But I can look at this in more detail and kind of would, get you more information yeah. as to what yeah. the square footage would look like for each property under the current reg, and then if we went to that the 40%. Would be true. I, I, just, I just, again, feel like... <clears throat> if you've got a lot of small properties and you don't want a lot of big buildings clunking down the road, so. You, this is a way of at least trying to make sure that there's some balance between uh, the sizes and the relationships to the parking and all, I guess. So it would be good, Abby, to give us some idea. Okay. All right. Um, the next one down, six. Um, so the Development Commission spent a lot of time on this one. So under the current regulation, it states no special permit use may be approved unless the Route 10 curb cut, which serves the special permit use, is separated by at least 800 feet from any other curb cut serving a special permit use and also located on the west side of Route 10. And it calls out or highlights the YMCA curb cut is the only curb cut serving a special permit use. So any other curb cut serving a special permit use under the current regulation would have to be located more than 800 feet from the YMCA driveway. So that would put, under the current regulation, a curb cut up around Mill Pond, mm -hmm. across you know where that outlets to serve a special yeah. permit use. And then moving south, um, the piece just south of um, the Floydville Road, Martha's Way intersection, pretty much on that southern property line, is 800 feet. So that's under the current regulation. Um, the Development Commission thought it was still important to try to minimize the number of curb cuts. Yeah. You know. We are proposing Absolutely. to get rid of the internal roadway, but still, you know, somewhat control access in that area. So this is the proposed language. Um, there shall only be three curb cuts on the west side of Route 10 serving a special permit use. The existing YMCA curb cut is the only curb cut that exists within the zone as the adoption of this regulation. So that means there would be two curb cuts remaining. A curb cut serving a special permit use will only be allowed under the following conditions. So one, where the property does not have access or could not obtain access via an agreement or easement with an adjacent property owner to an existing public or private drive. Or two, where the property is under separate ownership from an adjacent property that has access to Route 10 via an existing driveway. So in other words, if there are two properties next door that are under the same ownership, they would, under this, be forced to share a driveway out to Route 10. Um, and under the first point, if there's a property, like let's say the one to the south of Martha's Way, could obtain an easement um, over Martha's Way mm -hmm. to have access out to the light, they would be forced to do so. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, all the other properties would have to have their primary access off of Canton Road. Um, so that takes care of the two properties to the north, the triangular piece, and then the piece to the south of Canton Road. Um, and there is a provision in here, though, to permit secondary access um, or egress to a development with a curb cut on Route 10. Um, so that would be like right in, right out, um, or exit only, something like that. Um, and that's obviously on a case-by-case -case basis. So in terms of the requirement that they um, could not obtain access via an easement or agreement, that would be something that the applicant would have to prove as part of his or her special permit application. Right. right? So they would have to come in and say, I, I contacted the person, I, I contacted the property owner, I asked for an easement, I attempted to negotiate one, that person, that, that property owner wouldn't give me one. I mean, I guess I'm a, I'm a question. I, I don't. I like the concept. I'm questioning a little bit how how we would enforce it. 
I suppose, and this, I'm just trying to make up an absurd example so, make, so people can understand my question easily. So suppose I, I'm a person, I'm, I'm applying under this, and I say, well, Eric Myers is the adjacent property owner. I, own, I, I offered him a dollar for an easement, and he said no. Well, I didn't try very hard. I mean, so, I mean, so how would that, mm -hmm. how would enforcement of that work? So really, that piece of it is really intended to address the property south of Murtha's Way. Okay. That's really the only one that okay. this would apply to. Um, but certainly there might be a better way of trying to address that and trying to get them to come out at the light. So if there's um, an existing curb to all those properties have all those houses have curb cuts. Those are them. grandfathered, right? So no. So to serve a special permit use, the primary access would have to be off of a different driveway. So like for instance, the YMCA purchased I think two or three properties to the north. So under this proposed regulation, if there was to be a special permit development on some of those properties to the north, they would have to come off of the driveway that currently serves the YMCA, or they'd have to relocate the driveway. So basically all those properties share one access okay. point. Even though they already have a state approved curb cut. Right. That's right. And this is really no different, f well, the principle is the same because under the current regulation, even though all those properties have curb cuts, still to have a special permit use, those would not be allowed because they don't meet the 800 foot separation distance from the YMCA. Okay. It, but that's that, not in the, in the new regulation, the 800 foot. Right, so we're taking away the 800 feet and we're just trying to okay. limit the total so, number of curb cuts mm -hmm. as a way. So, well, Chris, Chris, Chris Cheney said, if I'm a property owner, there was one sliver they showed. I can't get an agreement from anybody. They want a million dollars for an easement. What happens then? So that would be something that the commission could consider a primary curb cut on. Okay, so there's an option in a special permit. Yes. If a good faith attempt has been, is that your question? Well, my concern and is more what, how much good faith could we require them to show? And my example is the opposite. I wasn't, I, I didn't, well, I didn't try very hard. I, my offer was yeah. disingenuous to my, my adjacent property owner because I want a curb cut and so I'm not gonna try very hard to get an easement or access. And how would, I'm not, I like the idea, I'm not sure how we enforce it. So I think this one is kind of, a, it's honestly a lot to wrap your head around. It kind of took me a few times. Okay. Um, so I think what would be helpful is if I prepare a map right. showing uh, yes. the ownership of the properties and what curb cuts under the draft regulation would look like. Mm -hmm. So you can see it visually and then yeah. we can figure out what language yeah. might right. work to try that to would accomplish be really it. That would be really, really yeah. helpful to me. Me too. <laughs> And I'd also go back to, you know, I'd like to define Route 10 of Santa Brook Street. You know, yes. The YMCA, that's a fixed place. It could become, you know, something else tomorrow. I don't know if we want to show the, the, the address. legal address, mm -hmm. the address that's in the uh, assessor's books for that. That's a good, I hadn't even thought of that, mm. but that is mm. a very good point. Mm. Mm. Here too, it'll be YMCA for Who's number down? We're still fresh out of school, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still you still fresh. remember property. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so then number seven, again, this is just removing reference to the internal ser service road. Yeah. Um, it appeared in both places. Um, Okay, moving on to number nine. The current regulation states no parking area for commercial development may be located within 100 feet of um, the Salmon Brook Street Line. So the Development Commission proposed reducing this to 25 feet. Which um, would so be this, consistent with across the street. So it's still a little bit more of a, of a buffer. So um, under regular site plan development, so in the C2 zone, it's a 20-foot landscape buffer between the road and the start of the parking area. So this is calling for 25 feet, five extra feet. Well, I'm not going to die on five, a hill on five feet, but again, I'm going to make an argument for consistency the with stop, some of these setbacks. The stop and chop, and then there's only 20 feet, their buffer? No, theirs is wider. Yeah. But the codes, they chose to make it wider, but the code's 20. 
20 Well, I think they chose to make it writer because they were going to get their special permit if they didn't. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that's true. I think no? they chose to make it wider because they thought they could do something quite attractive and make their overall store more attractive and more competitive. Yeah. And I can tell you because when I resigned from the commission, it was because it represented Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop has since that date used that buffer, photographs of that buffer, mm -hmm. for every new Stop and Shop that has been built since then. The persons who have proposed the new Stop and Shops have been required to come to the town of Granby to take a look at that. And it, it is viewed mm -hmm. as a huge positive in the history of Stop and Shops. Oh, and it is. Evolving I, designs. I, I mean, think it looks great. Yeah, um, yeah. It's terrific. What is the setback for Salmon Brook Vet, if you know? That is about 25 feet, mm -hmm. I believe, last time I looked at I it. I C2 was 25. No, so C2, C2 is 20, 20 feet. To the parking. Mm -hmm. For the parking. 50 for the building. 50 for the building. About 25. Mm -hmm. So not to jump ahead, but do these other zones also have the sidewalk requirement? Because like, this was suggesting that we would also put a sidewalk. Yes, so there is, um, yes, there is a sidewalk requirement in the other zones. Okay. Um, the commission is able to waive that. I don't have a problem. I'm not going to fight the 25, and I agree with Commissioner Lucanville. I like how the stop and shop came out. Mm -hmm. and I think that's a good look on that. I mean, we've been seeing that on other, not copying it to the same, but I know the um, small town septic did wonderful. Mm -hmm. Theirs came out great. Theirs. Absolutely. And I think that's a good, a good pattern manager. in town. Mm -hmm. And what's... Um, just for uh, more recent reference, the um, station 280. Do you oh, recall God, what that is? No, I don't. Yeah. So I'm just going to offer again that consistency aside, five feet is not a big deal, but that particular lot, the stop and shop lot, had the benefit of being super deep. So they had the ability to do that generous landscaping in front, have all the parking they need, and the building, and a back lot buffer. I don't know that that works in this zone. So five feet could make or break something. So I'm just throwing it out there. I'll hypothetically just ask if there was somebody's, Marty, did you guys look at that? The uh, overall depth of, yeah. uh, of the uh, T1 versus the C across the street? Uh, we did look across the street. Uh, but also remember, I'm mirroring other zones. The, the T1 sells its own, its own it's thing. Its own animal anyways. Yeah. So we kind of kept it as one animal. Okay. So, okay. Um, 20, I can live with 20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we figured we wouldn't take it. So we would buy the apple. Yeah, I think, I think 25 makes sense. It's fine. Well, why did we ever have it at 100 feet then? So that, I think part of it too is because of the internal road the buildings were supposed to face on that road and be Correct. set closer to the road and further from yeah. Salmonbrook Street. Yeah. Be the back so now it's so kind of that flipping. Would be the back, back of the building. Back. Right. You were to now screen. we're looking at the front. <laughs> I, 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 I to, you know, the, the advantage that we have here is it isn't all developed yet. So we're starting sort of with a little bit of a clean slate. And I'm, I'm not sure that I'm ready to buy into the consistency argument just because it's 20 or 25 feet somewhere else in town. Mm. We've got an opportunity here, and in my opinion, we'll screw it up if we don't insist on a lot of really, really excellent landscaping to make this thing look like something that's in Granby mm -hmm. and not in some other rather well-known town in the vicinity where they've completely botched the job of whatever they've done on Route 44. What if we said, minutes. I mean, I don't, obviously we're not going to make any decisions tonight. What if we, and I really feel the lots are so small now, I'm just not sure the 100 feet's realistic. Well, what if, feet, yeah, what yeah. if we set a, set something greater than 25 and said, but you can, you can have as little as 25 with a lands, with a landscape buffer approved as part of the special permit, something like that. So, Give us the flexibility to have a well, smaller that, buffer. That might, that might have potential. I mean, it, it's a. I take your point. I mean, we don't. We don't want it to look like towns that shall not be named. But um, <laughs> on the other hand, our goal is to have 
some development there, and so I, I think that. Oh, I, I know. It's and a, I think it's if we give ours, it is a balance. It is a balance. But I think so we I, can discuss so it. I, yeah, yeah, I think. I think we have. We have. I know we did it for some other zones where it's an X requirement. The commission can approve Y. Right. We can consider that. Um, I think if we have the the landscaping. Um, that we've done across the street and kind of have that as a concept. Maybe we want to word that in here a little bit more. That's what you know, I'm thinking. Because um, we have it here on uh, 3.10, which is for the um, buffering to an R30. Maybe on 3.9, we want to make a mention of a buffer along Sammerbrook Street. Yeah, that, um, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because we're going to require, I, I have a suspicion this commission is going to require it anyway. So it could be the 25 feet with the stipulation of a landscape buffer. That, so that is approved in, as part of the special permit mm -hmm. process. That's what I'm thinking. If you have and that we ahead. do, yeah. yeah you have that in the next page or two. Yeah, the next page. Yeah. It's yeah. 310, 312, is that the word is? Mm -hmm. Landscape buffer along the frontage of Salmon Brook shall be designed for each application. But we, right, but I guess what I'm saying is I'm specifically saying maybe we have a larger sized buffer which we are allowed to decrease if we believe the landscape plan is sufficient as part of this in other words have one have a, a larger depth requirement at and then say but you can have less if commission. you if the commission believes the landscape buffer is sufficient to permit it something that's not the yeah, wording exactly. I would use, but that's yeah. the concept. That's a good concept. That's a good concept. I, yeah, concept. I, think, I like that. I think we could uh, work something yeah. out on that. I mean, there, I've been impressed, frankly, with some of the landscaping plans that people have come up with. Yeah. I mean, there, there are very competent landscapers yeah. in our part of the world, and I think they can help a lot with making whatever we do pretty worthwhile. Just below, you're talking about a buffer area of not less than 50 feet um, separating proposed homes. Mm -hmm. So, so coming back, sorry for the parking area. Yeah. What information would you like me to provide to try and settle on, like what that, the greater buffer that would be needed? I guess what would help me the most would be to see what it would look like if the proposed revision was made. Mm -hmm. And then we can see, well, we don't like that's not good enough. So that, and then we'd work off that. All right, so I'll show the proposed 25 foot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we can go, okay. Okay. That's just to get at the number. That, that would really be helpful to me. It's kind of strange that I'm on this commission because I'm not a particularly visual person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not. You have to be visual. Right. Words. <laughs> Training. But then I'm just looking at something that already exists. That's true. So then for number 10, um, it currently requires a 150-foot landscape buffer from any proposed sep uh, special permit use from an existing single-family home and within the adjacent R30 zone. Um, this proposed change would take that down to 50 feet. So mm -hmm. this would apply to um, some of the properties on Canton Road. Um, those are obviously single family R30. And then on the southern end, um, the piece just after the one south of um, Murtha's Way there, you have a single family home mm -hmm. that's R30 adjacent yeah. to the T1. Um, so bo on both ends, that would be reduced to 50 feet rather than 150. That's kind of a tough sell if you go talk to the people who live there and say, hey, we're up. Yeah. For years, it's been you know, 150 feet, but uh, we're going to take away 100 feet of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. This, is, is, this is probably, for me, just anticipating when we move forward with mm. adopting these, I, the I had just flagged yeah. as the yeah. most controversial yeah. one. I, I think that might be one we want to look at. Mm -hmm. Well, we can look at it, but again, I'd like to see it on the map. I think some of the work yeah. that was done here was to encourage somebody to do something with the property. Um, the properties, again, I've stated this a couple times, are only so big and so deep. On certain sides, they get really narrow. You end up, you end up 
sealing the fate of certain pieces of that property if you leave the current. Um, we had some good maps, and I think if we have the, the, again, maybe we have the default is X, the commission has latitude up to Y. I think though that's been successful. That's right. Because it will depend on how close the homes are. And Correct. I mean, it's very different putting a commercial business next to a home as opposed to doing the uh, the condos or the, the houses right. that were built um, up on behind uh, the bridge. Yeah. 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 I always bought the bridge, but the grand. <clears throat> giving us latitude is always going to be helpful. If somebody proposes <coughs> retirement, multifamily, yeah. elderly housing, yeah. that that's might different. be able to go closer. That's, that's a very different thing. Than the drive through we're proposing. Yeah, or so a, yeah, I, I like a little store. flexibility, yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Again, these, these are special permits. I think we, we have a lot of latitude with what we do with special permits. Um, so I like your language. If, if it, let's say we land on, we call it 100, but can be reduced by the commission. If the commission yeah. feels the proposed landscape plan is is appropriate. And then if we don't think it is, we can say, well, we'll give you that. We'll, we'll give you the lesser, but you, this is the landscaping we're insisting on. And yeah. then if they don't want to do it, they don't get the permit. I think some flexibility there would be good. Mm -hmm. All right. I would just add, again, I must have been uh, going crazy my highlight of the night, but the last two sentences of that paragraph which says applicants are advised not to remove existing vegetation. I think that's redundant because we're going to require a buffer. If someone cut trees down 10 years ago or a year ago or whatever it happens to be and they legally did it for a fire, I don't know what it was for, we're still going to require a buffer. So I think that language to me seems a bit I don't know, redundant, superfluous, I don't know what the word is. We're looking, we're trying to avoid the clear cutter. You know, we had one up on Mountain Road. We, we've had it. We had oh, we've had it happen. <laughs> well, we I mean, I go back to a yeah. property. If I have a lot of trees and I want to cut them all down, it's my property, right? So if he does that or she does that, they're going to have to face the fact that they're going to have to re-landscape it under the first part of the paragraph. It's in their detriment to do that. I don't know what you guys think. That's I think it is. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, there's the reality that we have the ability to tell them how to landscape it, but there is a lot of existing buffer natural landscaping right now that does not serve any purpose whatsoever because it's garbage. Um, it's either high, tall trees that provide no buffer, or they're invasive species, or non-desirable, stable species. They don't provide any screen, they don't provide any buffer, sometimes getting rid of um, undergrowth that they do and replacing it with desirable species for the use is a better um, use. But I think the next yeah. section allows us to do that. We don't have to, it's just a discussion topic we might want. I, I understand your point, yeah. and I, I mean, remember too that given under 3.10.3.12 and under some of these other provisions we're talking about, if they clear cut and we're, we're unhappy yeah. with that, we said, you know what, you have to find exactly what was there, mm -hmm. or you're not getting the permit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably a lot more expensive. Right, so. and, and <laughs> since you cut down existing that didn't cost you anything, now you're gonna have to pay a lot of money. Lot of money. Well then leave in, applicants are advised not to remove vegetation prior to the commissions. And just take out, and just take out the last I, sentence. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So that lets them know we don't want them to, to do a clear cut. Yep. You know, come come to us first, and then we'll work on that with you. I agree. That's good. I like that. That's good. And, and that and that yeah. argument allows people to actually clean it up and that's make right. it look nicer. That's right. You don't want the poison ivy, you can get rid of your poison ivy. <laughs> that's right. All right. Um, number twelve. This takes out the requirement that applicants shall use the design elements of the landscape berm located at 124 Salmon Brook Street, Stop and Shop Plaza. Um, as a guide and the thought was like because the properties on in the t1 zone the topography is different it goes up there might be some other elements that might be more appropriate um but i'll leave that up to you guys to decide well i have an opinion on this um i, I wrote on my notes here keep it no, I, 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 th I think this is a really really important part of our regulations it gives applicants a clear example of what we're looking for mm -hmm. and I think it's helpful I'd, I'd leave it in yeah, they would they would they would address the issue with what's appropriate to the landscape and it wouldn't look identical but it gives them an idea of what we're looking for we're looking for some nice trees and shrubs and things that softens the, the, 
the street skates. Well, it, it does say where possible, so yeah, that so gives them yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. if they want to say it's just not possible to do then it, they can bring fine. it to us. Can look or they can even say what, well, well, we tried that and it just doesn't mm -hmm. work yeah. for our yeah. property, yeah. so we're proposing yeah. this instead. Yeah. A lot of that is uphill, that's so uphill. I understand a little yeah. bit about where somebody may struggle yeah. with a yeah. slurped yeah. uphill buffer burn, yeah. but they can bring it to us. Yeah. And you can, I, I, uh, you know, with the development commission, maybe it sh they uh, should consider instead of shall use. Um, maybe that's. Mm -hmm. I look at you, Marty. Was there a strong feeling of why you took that out? Sure. I apologize to ask you. I wasn't mm -hmm. here, so I shouldn't be asking no, this no, question. I think uh, consider is a good idea. Yeah. Think, since the properties are quite small and they're all kind of unique, they're all going to have their own needs for it with respect to the landscape buffering. So, um, but from a quality standpoint, I agree with Eric. I guess, I mean, the stop and shop is mm -hmm. you know, it's nicely done. Um, it's so I, I, like I like having if we're going to do any of it, should consider instead of shall yeah. use, but I'm not going to, yeah. that's not a hill that to uh, fall yeah. But that works. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, yes. Yeah, it's often that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, moving down to 15, uh, I took out the requirement for metal halide lighting just because that's outdated at this point. And any lighting plan would have to be presented for the commission's approval anyway. Guys, don't kill me. Uh, 3.17 Abbey. Yep. It says a complete site plan. Is that not already required in our regulations? Is that redundant? It's, yeah, kind of redundant. All right. It's already, it's part of, we require that. Yeah. Okay. So if we took that out, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Just trying to clean up the yeah. Okay. And then, um, the same goes with 18 is the fact that we have um, wave. Is that different than section seven? Yes. For parking? Yeah. Okay, so we leave that in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, 3.10.5, this next section covers uh, specific design guidelines. So under the current regulation, um, high quality masonry building materials, brick stone, um, shall make up no less than 50% of the wall surface area. Uh, this proposes to change it to 20%. Um, and then it keeps, the rest of it stays the same. The balance of the wall surface shall be made up of wood siding or single shingle shakes or a combination of wood and synthetics. Um, it does propose removing synthetic materials shall be limited to no more than 25% of the surface area of any facade. Um, and this is in recognition that synthetic building materials have come a long oh, way yeah. since this was adopted and they can be appropriate um, in some cases, especially given the quality of them. I think more cases than not, they outperform wood products in many ways. And wood products and a lot of wood buildings in town look shabby. Mm -hmm. And reducing the masonry requirement to 20%, that would allow like the nice decorative, I guess, skirt around buildings that you see with stone and then the clapboard yeah. above, as opposed to requiring, you know, 50% of masonry, which I'm not sure how that would look. Um, Before you go on, sorry, I had mm -hmm. um, 3.10.54, building material color should primarily consist of neutrals and darker tones. I would like to add is preferred. Again, that comes down to uh, look at the, the the lawyers in the room. Is um, you know, it's, it's a vague if we put that as a requirement, but I think if we leave it as preferred, what do you guys think? We have that down below for uh, some other things because it's hard when we're not consistent to find. We don't define what that means. It gives a little too much subjectiveness to uh, the regulations. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think you're right. I, mean, I don't know. Sorry, I just, I just. My, my client wanted a particular color. And <laughs> I guess I'd say that's yeah, kind of dark. Yeah. You know? I don't know. So is encouraged. I mean, yeah, I just, we have like five, ten. It should be preferred. I think we could just put preferred and. Okay. Sorry, it's just. Uh, no, I, I. You know, you don't want to impose a huge cost on the town. There's a difference between preferred and. Yeah. Should primarily. <laughs> well, all I can say is when I first moved to Hartford a long time ago, we lived in West Hartford, 
and there was a gentleman on a the street that had a feud with his neighbor, and he decided that what he would do was to paint his house bright purple. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. I know where that house is. I think you might it's know. It's still that I think color. I see that <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh my! So it's right on the list. Right? Oh. I have no more free form comments. I'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, number eleven parking should be central to the overall development, um, and if possible, surrounded on no less than two sides by the proposed commercial business. Um, that's proposed to be removed. Um, and just evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis with the site plan. Mm -hmm. um, 12, um, parking should be situated to provide efficient pedestrian access from business to business. And then this section is proposed to be removed to ensure that a single parking space will be close enough to all corners of the commercial center. Yeah. Um, 13, <laughs> this is proposed to be removed altogether. The circulation lanes of the parking area should be located adjacent to the front facade, should be characterized by benches, street trees, trash receptacles, high quality materials, textured pedestrian crossings and pedestrian scale lighting. The desired effect of such an arrangement is to create a small scale main street environment. Mm -hmm. um, so given the proposed kind of departure from the internal roadway and kind of having a unified development the Development Commission thought that this wasn't really applicable here. Mm -hmm. um, certainly if there were to be multiple buildings on one site as part of a site plan, the Commission would look to make sure there's some uniformity. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure the applicant would propose that anyway. Um, but just thinking that this was getting a little in the weeds when it came to requiring something well, like not that. Not only that, it, it really feels to me like it was back to the loop road thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah. that too. Yeah. I don't really think this is feasible now that the loop mm -hmm. road's off the table. Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> All right. Um, 15. So currently, um, it states a system of sidewalks designed for the convenience of pedestrian traffic shall be incorporated in all development applications. And then it goes on to speak to how sidewalks shall be designed. So that um, section is proposed to be deleted, but replaced with sidewalks shall be required along Route 10, which we can change to Salmonbrook Street, and may be required along the frontage of other roads and or within a particular site when the commission determines such sidewalks are necessary to provide linkages to adjacent sites and other sidewalks in the area. All site design shall include sidewalks which lead from the street to the building. Um, and this really stems from the town's overall sidewalk plan to eventually continue the sidewalk from Salmon Brook Park all the way down to the stretch that went in in front of Martha's Way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is important that it be specifically stated in the regulation that if a developer is to do a site development in the T1 zone, sidewalk. they will be required yeah. to put a sidewalk along Salmon Brook Street to um, create that linkage. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, 16 is proposed to be removed, and that's in cluster commercial settings. Pedestrian pathways should be covered along the front facade. And again, that getting away from the internal yeah. road. Mm -hmm. um, and then 18, um, there's a change to uh, screening mechanical equipment. It requires a masonry screen wall and thought it would be more appropriate just to evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then 22, this is a new section um, requiring the screening of refuse containers. Um, and this language was taken from what we have in the community <coughs> center requirement, so just pulling it into the T1. Very good. Good, very nice. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like there's consensus with some of the changes and then we'll revisit some of the setbacks and I'll prepare those maps um, and we can review that in more detail and figure out what makes sense. Sounds good. <coughs> I need to see pictures. Yeah, yeah. It will be, it's helpful. It will be I think really the maps will really be yeah. very helpful. Mm -hmm. I see how this is going to work. Yeah. And thanks again to the Development Commission. It was yeah. a lot of good work for us. Yeah. Saved us uh, a they lot did it. of uh, yeah. back and forth. We yeah. took some of that off of us. So thank they you. Yeah. did it before, yeah. too. I think we referenced Route 10 because that's what was in the regulation. Is that how? I think so. It was, yeah. So I don't know if there's other regulations. <laughs> other, there's some questions. Other thank regulations you. that reference Route 10 versus Santa Cruz Street. So mm -hmm. for, uh, 
there, there may be Eric Myers for consistency. We might want to look at that. Yeah, Eric's on that committee. Consistency. He's got to come. Actually, it was Jonathan with the consistency. Yeah, not okay, so we'll work on that. Uh, we'll probably start a little bit on it in our next meeting, but not a lot because we have a joint meeting. So. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, if we're done with that, thank you, Andy. Any other questions? We'll move on to our joint meeting with the selectmen, which is going to be at our next meeting on the 24th. Just from a procedural standpoint, Abby, are we still planning to have a PNZ meeting right before? Yes. Okay, so we'll have a brief PNZ meeting before, and when that concludes, we'll go into a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen, and that's on the 24th, 4th, right? Mm -hmm. So at the meeting, uh, there's uh, outstanding items, which is the center. Uh, zone studies and affordable housing. So Abby did write a memo, and I do want to focus a little bit more first on the center study because that's something that I think is um, we've been going through, and I think it, it's something we do need to keep working on in, in light of changes that are going on. So Abby, maybe you want to run through your memo, and then I'll open up to the commission. Yep. Um, so at the joint meeting, this commission was tasked with creating a process to scope the study. So in October, um, I had prepared several options and this com commission discussed them and kind of came up with a hybrid approach. Um, so at that time, it was agreed um, town staff would prepare a draft scope. The draft scope would be circulated to Development Commission, Planning and Zoning. Um, planning and Zoning would hold a public session to gather input from the public and then the draft scope would be referred to the Board of Selectmen and they would take it from there. Um, so in preparation for the joint meeting, I think it's just important that we actually solidify and make sure we all agree on that process. Um, and I've just noted, just a, a, I guess an item to clarify that as part of that, the this commission would be responsible for kind of compiling the information from the Development Commission and the public and creating what you think should be the draft scope. So kind of you serve as the clearinghouse for everything. And then it gets referred over to the Board of Selectmen um, for further action. Yeah. Comments? No, it makes sense. And I, I have my, I mean, you guys know, I, I have a different view of this, which is, um, this commission can go through this, but I, I really do want to get that subcommittee formed. Mm -hmm. If this commission wants to do the scope work, we're going to have to work at it. We may need a special meeting or two. I am fearful that this is going to drag out and we'll be here next December before we have something to do there. I mean, I think the center zone is important. We have the uh, DOT finishing the project at Station 280, and I want to really... I, I don't want this to languish, and it's, I'm interested in you guys' comments. It's I agree wholeheartedly. I thought, guys, I thought we had discussed a subcommittee forming for this. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a little confusion, so because a lot of ideas have been kicked around too. So um, I think there's an agreement, and obviously this can be discussed further at the joint meeting. That when it comes time for the actual study to be done, there will be a subcommittee or some other committee created to kind of oversee like committee with people from different boards, possibly. Possibly, you know, whatever that will look like. Um, in terms of coming up with items to just put out, you know, that should be included. Um, that's yeah, whether or not you think it can be efficient you know, having a working session here and farming it out similar to the strategic plan process or if you want a dedicated group um, for that piece of it. So for the scope, we're talking about, we're gonna study the center. So we would talk about traffic, pedestrian, signage, exactly. architectural, all the, the details mm -hmm. of Municipal population, project. all the details that we think should be looked at. We're not going to discuss those per se, but these are, and then hopefully it seems that I agree with Mark that we would put together some sort of a subcommittee that would sit down and start working on that. Right. Is that kind yeah, of the process so scoping we're talking the about? study right is just coming up with basically the laundry list laundry of items list first. that should so be looked at. Really <laughs> I think we can give an outline. I would not mm -hmm. make it a restrictive outline. If that subcommittee, yeah. I think the uh, farm store, <laughs> subcommittee that we came out two years ago was great. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of copy that. And if we this commission come up with some outlines, 
hey, we want you to look at one, two, three, four, five, six, they might come up with seven, eight, nine. Yeah. I don't want to restrict them and box them in. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I agree. Yeah, um, great. Absolutely. So I'm all for if we want to do this, as long as this, I mean, I'd like to get this, if we can't do it the first February meeting, the second February meeting, to get this really kicked off, because I want to, I want to get this moving along, because I, I see opportunity with the center zone to uh, help out, especially with everything. I, I don't want us to be lagging behind what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's my two cents. So how does that work with the, with the select and schedule? Because it seems like they are the captain of this boat. So yeah, I think um, with the joint meeting on the 24th, mm -hmm. I think if they're agreed to this process to scope it, um, we would be ready in February um, to have that initial draft list okay. put together for you guys and then get it over to Development Commission and then maybe the second meeting in um, February or first meeting in March have a public session with this commission. This so it would be good to tell the selectmen, and I'll ask Very all slow. of you, we'll do this process and then we're going to recommend the subcommittee or the select committee, whatever you want to call it. I think the subcommittee slow. makes sense. I, I think it's too hard to, yeah. we have, with our regular business, to add this to our plate. I think it works mm -hmm. very well. I, mean, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And it allows the public to get involved. In other yeah. words, oftentimes we've had from the different um, other commissions, but we also have had um, the public. And when we've had them before, yeah. I don't think we've ever turned anybody away that wanted to be on it. Because the more, the not more the merrier, but we, what you find is, some people don't really like coming to meetings and think it was a great idea, and they don't come, and you end up with a, a nice working group of people, of folks. So. Yep. It seems slow, though. Would that be? Well, these steps. All right. Okay. We'll talk about that on the 24th tomorrow. And then um, uh, the next was affordable housing. And Abby, I know you sent us out a chart from our past meetings and a lot of them are on hold due to the, some of the studies. So maybe you want to explain what uh, to that one here? Yes. Um, so at the joint meeting um, in the fall, uh, the Board of Selectmen and this commission assigned responsible parties to the different tasks. Um, so I went through the ones that were assigned to this commission um, and kind of highlighted ones that I thought um, would be helpful to wait until we receive some information back from other ongoing studies before this commission decides what to do with, um, and then other ones that um, we might want to start talking about and figure out next steps for. Um, so for instance, a lot of the ones under number two examine the regulations governing development of multifamily housing. Um, a lot of those items speak to um, the center zones, um, the PDM zone, and reference public infrastructure. And so I think a lot of, and you know, looking at increasing density and reducing lot sizes, and I think a lot of that will be dependent upon um, the outcome of the flow study and other, you know, our look at infrastructure analysis of that. Um, so I think it might be a little premature for this commission to start looking at some of those items while we have that, um, study pending. One that might be a possibility to look at is 2F, consider a change to the zoning regulations to require a certain percentage of units constructed in multifamily development be deed restricted affordable, known as inclusionary zoning. Um, so that's something that doesn't necessarily affect density or depend on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's just a look at our current regulations. Um, so something like that might be worth taking a closer look at. Um, Vast, but not got much success. And then we have under three, um, again, this speaks to public water and sewer, so I thought maybe putting that on hold. Um, B, consider a density bonus within the flexible residential development for the construction of affordable housing. Um, that's something that this commission might want to look at. Um, C, consider a modification to require the set aside of a certain number of affordable housing units in any planned residential subdivision. Um, and again, those, that's not dependent upon anything else that I can see. Um, and then the last one that might be a possibility is promote sidewalk connections and additional bike paths. And again, that would be something just looking at our zoning regulations and what requirements we have for sidewalks. 
So I don't know what are what are your thoughts? I think in the areas that aren't criminal, it makes sense to get moving and looking looking at it. Not saying we're going to definitely make any or all of these changes, but looking at what mm -hmm. we might consider. Mm -hmm. I agree, Abby, with the, I think the flow study, to me, before we do any significant or changes to mm -hmm. zoning, really, mm -hmm. it's got to be on the flow study. So all the ones you have on hold are there. And, um, yeah, I, I really am not looking, for me, I don't think any significant changes to the regulation. I don't think mm -hmm. we're there yet because the regulations to me are intertwined, right? So. Uh, the only one I could I could maybe want to ask the commission would be 3C, which is what we had for the grand. Um, there was, because uh, that was a special permit that was in the floor, but that might be something you might want to uh, just throw it out there for the other. Uh, I know the station 280 was in a they, they, site they, plan yeah, only. They, yeah, so they could, said no, but um, the grant said yes. I don't know how many units we have, and they work so with social that, services. That might be something that I could see, but for me, mm -hmm. the rest of the things are there. And the, the bike paths, I'm not sure really is an affordable housing thing, more of a, that's part of our connectivity. Mm -hmm. And, and is, you know, sidewalks and things aren't really appropriate, out, you know, they're not going to make sense outside mm -hmm. of the the oh, core. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not going to have them on Bushy Hill Road, for example. Mm -hmm. you know? no, that's my two cents. You know what I liked as I read through this, and I don't know when it would be possible or how it would be possible, but I like the idea of the housing trust fund. We do that with sidewalks. When we have a development and there's no purpose of having a sidewalk, we put money into a sidewalk fund. I mean, I thought that was a very, I don't think I picked it up before when I read your wonderful plan, Chris, but I, th I think that's a really interesting idea and how it could work. Um, I just I like, I like that idea. How it would be used, how it would be done, I have no idea. But Maybe one, if we want to start just looking at that in a preliminary manner, maybe I need to gather some information mm -hmm. from other communities mm -hmm. and how they, how they structure that and how mm -hmm. they yeah. use it. Sure. Because I was thinking there's a a piece of property behind Town Hall there, and if that were ever for sale, it would be ideal for more senior housing to go along with Stony Village. And if you had a housing trust fund, there you go. All so, depends on the numbers. That's right, exactly. Absolutely. Okay, What's so. For old people, now yeah, that I'm done. <laughs> I, th I think if you know, if Abby, if, I mean, for me again, I would think the, uh, we might want to just, we can set aside for a future meeting, but the, the zoning regulation and Paula's point, if we want to do a, uh, instead of, it's not set aside instead of open space, but you know, a yeah, trust like I mean, that's a, con those are conceptual things. Mm -hmm. I think those are, okay. I'm not proposing we change regulation, but I think they're a good discussion. That's point. a great idea. So we can report back then that we're going to look at the inclusionary zoning and the trust fund because those kind of go yeah. hand yeah. in hand. And I think uh, one of the commissioners good. mentioned to me, you know, we did uh, already prior to or in parallel with the study, we did change our accessory department mm -hmm. regulations. So mm -hmm. that was one yeah. of we've, we kind of did that in parallel. So yeah. th that's. We were ahead of the game. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. We really were ahead of the game. So it's not like we haven't. Right. Okay, anything else on that? No. Any staff report? Um, so one item I wanted to highlight, um, the town did award the flow study to tie and bond. Um, so we had a kickoff meeting on Friday um, with their engineers there. So um, over the next couple months, they're going to be gathering a bunch of data, looking at water usage, um, our sewer maps, all the as-builds, um, and then they plan on installing the flow meters in March, um, and they'll be in, I think, for eight to ten weeks. Um, and so they'll be gathering data and then working on the report over the summer um, and hopefully have something back to us late summer, um, you know, August, September time frame um, for an update. So that is ongoing. I had a question about that. Do you know whether, whether as part of their study, do they consider the impacts of climate change on 
pre precipitation because it's I heard a thing just on the news tonight the United States uh, precipitation dropped by over an inch and a half since last year it's the biggest drop in well, not, it's not the biggest drop in history, but it's the biggest drop in a hell of a long time. I just wonder, are, are, do they take that kind of stuff into consideration when they're giving us information on flow? Yeah, so they do they to do. the extent okay. as to when um, they put the meters in and what the precipitation is, and that's, that's why they put it in in the spring, actually, because it's expected to be wet, so they can, that's kind of like peak flow. Um, and they look for anomalies, like if there's been flooding events, that would, you would have you know, a potential lot of infiltration into the system. Um, so to a certain extent, so they weird. do, but not, I don't think maybe to the level that you're asking yeah, about. Okay, I'm just curious. So that's, he, Eric's question is asking me a question. Does our sewer system that we have taken stormwater? I thought it was a closed so, system for just sewage. It is. Um, however, one of the things the study is going to look at is if there are areas where there's infiltration with fresh water getting in. Um, because that can be an issue in some locations. Like, I know the MDC was doing a really big project with lining the pipes to make sure that it's tight. No so you're only treating, you know, sewage that goes to the plant and you're not getting fresh water yes, in as yeah, well. Storm water. Exactly. Okay. Any commissioner comments? Yes, yes, other than to thank the Development Commission again yes. for putting this together. I think they did a wonderful job. And it was good to have you here so we could ask you questions. And I'll just remind the commission we will have a regular meeting agenda to it will come out, a uh, brief meeting on the 24th, and then we will go straight into, I, I believe at 7.30 is advertised for the joint meeting. So still seven for the seven for the plan is only we'll keep our regular time told the select when we weren't going to cancel our meeting so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will need an alternate for me for it thanks guys are the select one going to be bringing food or anything <laughs> i don't know but I, I'll, I'll put a word in for that <laughs> just, just kidding <laughs> So again, and I also echo uh, Marty. Thanks for the development commission and uh, everybody's time today. So, nothing uh, else being uh, for business. I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Paula, uh, motion. John, second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. We are adjourned.